Well, again, happy Sabbath. Uh, Jared, wonderful job. Uh, a wonderful talent. Boy, God-gifted talent uh, with the youth. It's uh, good that uh, seeing the generations coming up, uh, generation after generation. Again, happy Sabbath, and glad you're all here this morning. Um, there are many prayer requests uh, written in the bulletin this morning. Please remember each and every one of those. Uh, we have a num- possibly a number of people out. Uh, Greg and family are up uh, in Spokane, so wishing them good travels and uh, safety coming and going. And I know everyone may have um, uh, a request on their heart this morning, so please remember those, and let's, um, let's please stand with me in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the sunshine. <clears throat> we sing um, uh, in the sweet by and by, we will meet on that beautiful shore. This is part of it, Lord. We know the sun will be shining down on us, shining your face upon us and the blessings that uh, you continue to give us and uh, carry us through those times we need carried. Lord, be with uh, each and every one this morning as the word is shared through our brother, Kurt. And we are so blessed to have the talents we are to be able to deliver your word, to apply it to our daily walk. And uh, you know the need that's out there. It's widespread, far beyond this community and far beyond this country. Lord, be with um, our leaders as we transition uh, uh, coming up, as we choose new leaders. You know the need there and where we need to go. Be with this congregation. Be with this family and the extended family. All these things in your son's name. Amen. Good morning, and if you guys could please stand with us as we sing this. It's kind of a new song, but it's pretty simple to catch on to.
seated. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given to us, that you have led us to your cross, that we have had time to, uh, to sing and to express personally our desire for you to lead us to your cross, to your love, to your faithfulness, to your grace. Lord, as we are here today and as we um, enter this time of looking into your word, and what you have to share for us. Lord, I just ask that you, would, uh, that you would move me out of the way and that you would just speak your words, that your grace would be known today, that your love and your faithfulness would be seen to us. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for revealing yourself to your people. In your son's name we pray, amen. I don't have a uh, PowerPoint per se. Do you do have a, a little handout in your uh, in your bulletin that you can kind of follow along a little bit what we're talking about today? But today I want to just talk about a holy discontent, and that seems to be a little bit backwards because we we want to try and be content, right? We like it when we can be content when things are going well. In fact, that's kind of the way God even designed our bodies. The scientific word, they, they say it's called homeostasis. Our body wants to be in a state of, of good. And things are working really well. They're going together. They're content. The world, God designed it so that it, it works together. All of the systems are in place and they work together to... Uh, you know, it's the cogs that, that spin and, and everything is good. Everything is content. So we're going to do a little bit of interaction here. I want you to, to help me out. If I ask you a question, most of the time I'm, I'm going to try and look for a response from you. And here's my first question. What makes you content? Any ideas? What makes you happy? What's that? Family and health, good. Stability, did I hear? Friends, friends make us content. Anything else? I'm sorry? Good finances, yes. Sunshine. A lot of, a lot of good things in life, isn't there? Well, let's flip it around a little bit and, and let me ask you, what makes you discontent? Strife. Strife. Okay. Sickness. War. War. No friends. Very good. <laughs> that makes sense. If friends make us content, no friends must be discontent, right? I think there's a lot of, and, and it's different for all of us, right? We all have kind of our trigger points where, uh, where we can just be really content and happy, and, and sometimes there are just things that bother us and may not bother somebody else, and that's all right. Well, God wants us to be content, right? Yeah. He, he does want us to be content, but there's a, a, a certain area, part of, of our life and a part of his calling on us that he actually wants us to be discontent. And I want to talk about that a little bit today. Because contentment, contentment is, is um, it's like when we, we, we want to sit down, we want to relax. We know everything is going good. We can forget about all the cares around us. Things are just going well, so 
So uh, we can just sit down and be happy. But discontent is something that, that spurs us to action, makes us look for something different, makes us want to change our situation. And that's, that's part of what God calls us uh, to be as his people, is to be discontent because he wants to spur us into action. And so I, the, the title of my message today is Holy Discontent. And what do I, what do I mean by that phrase, holy discontent? Well, holy is something that is devoted to a deity, devoted to God, something that is set apart for him. God is holy, and he is the, the only source of, of holiness. So if we see holy among ourselves, if we see it in the world, it's because he is a part of that. God is holy. But being discontent is being not pleased or not satisfied. Something's wrong. Something is off kilter. We want to um, change it. We want to make it better. And so it's that stirring in our hearts that, that comes from God and causes us to act on his behalf until we can be satisfied with the outcome. God places in our hearts a holy discontent, something that is connected to him, something that also brings, um, brings about contentment an action that we can take. So our holy discontent is kind of our motivation. It's, it's like a passion that, that fuels us. It's our passion for making a difference in the world. How many of you say, um, when I grow up, I want to make a difference in the world? Anybody ever say that, think that? Just me. Okay. Never mind, I guess I'm done. Um, we all have within us a desire to make things better. And that's, that's, part of the, uh, that's what God has put in our hearts. It's not just from us, it's from God. God wants to, to use us to make things better. Bill Hybels said this, the motivating reason why millions of people choose to do good in the world is because there's something wrong in the world. We know there's something wrong and we want to make it better. So the key to fruitful discontentment, remember, discontent is not really what we want to have, right? But there's a, there is a good part of being discontent and that's that holiness aspect of it because it comes from God it's a discontent that comes is created by God and given to us by God and so it is holy started by him directed through him did you know God has a holy discontent I think there are several ways that we could explain it uh, but this is, I want to use a passage in Exodus 3, verses 7 through 10, uh, to really just draw out what I'm talking about when I, when I say that God has a holy discontent. And the verses say, The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them. From the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God wants to be our rescuer. And he was the rescuer of the people of Egypt. But that story is really just a, uh, an uh, analogy of our spiritual life. 
that God wants to be the rescuer for each and every one of us. God is looking down on us and he's saying, you're trapped, you're enslaved, you're in slavery to sin. We're in bondage. And God says, I am going to come down and rescue them. That's God's desire. That's, that's where God says, something's not right. And I'm going to change it and make it better. And so in, uh, in Exodus 29, 46, he also says this. He says that they will know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of Egypt so that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord, their God. That's God's desire for us, that he would rescue us and that we would know him as our God and our Savior. And of course, he did come down to rescue us through the person of Jesus. John 20, 31 says, These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So that's God's holy discontent that he desires to free us from sin. He desires to give us eternal life. And he did that through the work of Jesus Christ. But that's not all of what he did. That's not all of God's holy discontent because he didn't just say he was going to do it. He gave us a part of it. And if we go back to Exodus 3 in verse 10, he's talking to Moses and he says, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. So part of God's contentment is that he sees us answering his call to help him in that rescuing And in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, we know the Great Commission that God said, I'm going to send you out. I want you to go make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He gives us that call to go. He is sending us. Sending us to be a part. And that, and that completes God's... Um, God's holy discontent. He sees us as slaves to sin. He wants to free us from that bondage. And once he frees us, he tells us, go and help me free someone else. Part of God's plan for us. So, do you think we all have a holy discontent? Every, every person who is created by God has given a per, been given a purpose. And all of us who accept the Lord as our Savior and want to live for Him, we become a part of that solution. And so I think He gives us a holy discontent. Is yours the same as your neighbor is next to you? No, we're all different, aren't we? God calls us in different ways. But God has given us a holy discontent. The first part of that, I think, is that God calls you to a relationship with him. God just didn't say, okay, I'm going to come and I'm going to save you. I'm going to wipe your, your uh, sins away. I'm going to make you clean, and then we're done. All right, have a good day. God doesn't do that. God says, come and walk with me through this life, into eternal life. And so a part of, of uh, understanding what his will is for us is that we have to walk with him in that relationship. We have to learn um, how he wants to draw us close, how he wants to relate. We said earlier, uh, what makes us content? There were a few things that were mentioned like friends, family, 
the people around us. It's those relationships that we build that, uh, that grow us. So that's part of God's holy discontent for us. And then the second part of it is that he wants us to share that with others. So I want to look at the, the, the second part first. And then we'll go back to the first part. But the second part is um, it's our action. It's the, uh, the steps that we can take to fulfill God's holy discontent in our lives. So let's look at Abraham in the Bible. Abraham, uh, God called him to be a, a sojourner or a, a nomad. He took him out of his home and he wanted to take him to the promised land. And so that was part of Abraham's call that he wasn't satisfied where he was. The Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. So part of what God gave to Abraham was that he was to, uh, he was to leave his place. He was to go and start the process of moving his people to the promised land. If we want to look at that on a spiritual level, what about Ruth? Ruth in the Bible, in Ruth 1, 16 and 17, Naomi is trying to get her to leave and go back to her home country. And, and Ruth says, no, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you from me. Do you see the discontent that Ruth had there? She was not willing to leave Naomi. She chose to stay with her. It was a commitment that she made. And that's part of our, um, that's one aspect of a holy commitment that I want to, to bring out today, that it involves commitment, stick to itiveness. Isaiah. Isaiah was called. His holy discontent was that he was called to be a missionary. He was called to to take the the word of the Lord to people. Um, God said, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. We can find that in Isaiah 6. Isaiah answered the call. That was part of what what God wanted Isaiah to do, to go out and to preach his gospel, to prophesy for him. And, of course, we understand uh, Jeremiah was also a a major prophet. And this is what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 20, verses 8 and 9. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say, I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. Jeremiah was called to preach the word. And Jeremiah did preach the word, but every time he talked to people, they didn't want to listen. And Jeremiah was persecuted because of that. And so he's saying, God, every time I say something that you tell me to say, nobody listens to me. Why should I say it anymore? But then he said, I have to. Because God, you've placed it in my heart. You've placed this burden in my heart. And I need to share it. That was his holy discontent. The last person in the Bible that we want to look at is Paul. Paul was called to be um, a preacher to the Gentiles. Not many were called at that time to preach to the Gentiles. That was something totally new. But that was what Paul was called to do. That was his holy discontent 
In Ephesians 3, 8 and 9, it says, Although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery. That was Paul's holy discontent. He wasn't happy that the Gentiles did not know Christ. And so he made it his mission. He answered that call from God to go and to preach the word. Just a couple other people throughout history that I wanted to highlight, and and one of them is uh, Martin Luther. If you remember Martin Luther, he posted the 95 Theses on the wall, and basically what they said was that the Bible was the central religious authority and that humans may reach salvation only by their faith and not by their deeds. So Martin Luther wanted to challenge the organized religion of the day and say, no, this is what the Bible says. That was, that was how God chose in that time to bring about his word through Martin Luther. And Martin Luther said, I cannot and I will not recant anything. If you remember from his story, the, uh, the religious leaders told him he needed to recant and take away what he had said. And he said, no, I can't. I cannot go against conscience, for it is neither right nor safe. Here I stand. I can do no other. So help me God. Amen. Martin Luther was committed to preaching and to the discontent in his heart that God gave to him. Hi, Gavin. You want to preach for me? (laughs) You can help me. Mother Teresa was another one that we think of. She was a, a ministry to the poor. And what I found out from Martha, Mother Teresa is that in 1946, she went on a retreat. And it was on that journey she realized that her true calling was to give up everything and follow Christ into the slums and serve him among the poorest of the poor. So in 1950, she started the Mission of Charity, which was a congregation dedicated to caring for the hungry, the naked, the homeless, the crippled, the blind, the lepers, and all of those people who feel unwanted, unloved, uncared for throughout society, people that have become a burden to the society and are shunned by everyone. That was what broke her heart. And that's what she was called to do. Billy Graham. Anybody uh, never heard of Billy Graham? He's a common name in our, in our century. He was called to be an international evangelist. And so his pursuit, what he said... He said, everywhere I go, I find that people, both leaders and individuals, are asking one basic question. Is there any hope for the future? And my answer is the same. Yes, through Jesus Christ. So Billy Graham had a message of Jesus Christ that he brought to not just America, but to the world. Let's bring it home a little closer. Uh, Todd and Donna Larson. They are a family that uh, just recently went to Cambodia. And they were called to be foreign missionaries. Their, their slogan, the motto that they follow is, Three Billion Waiting. And what that means is that there are three billion people on the planet today who have not heard of the name of Jesus. And so Todd and Donna heard God's call to go and help be a part of that solution where they will, they will hear. And so now it gets down to me, to you and I. And I want you to be asking that question today. What is your holy discontent? And the reason that I, I look at Um, different people throughout the Bible and throughout history is that we see a variety of what 
people have been called to. Some were called to be foreign missionaries. Some were called to be preachers, to preach the word. Some were called to reach out to the poor and needy. In some way, God is calling you, and he's put in your heart a holy discontent. And what is that holy discontent in your heart today? What is it that is happening in the world that you just can't stand? Anybody remember this phrase? That's all I can stand, and I can't stand no more. Who said that? Popeye, right? Popeye would say that line, and then he'd grab a can of spinach, and then he'd be, have super strength. He'd do what he needed to do, right? What is it in, in your life today that you can't stand? Something that's going on in the world that breaks your heart. For all of us, it's different. Because God made us to be different, and God gave us gifts. And so, so where God places a discontent in your heart and where God gives you gifts to, to be able to use them for him, that's where those things combine and that's where God calls you to make a difference in the world. So what's your holy discontent today? It's not through us. It's not because of, of our power. God doesn't give us a holy discontent based on what we can do ourselves. It's what God is doing in us. God's power at work in the lives of his people to make a change. But I want to bring it back just to the first step in God's holy discontent. Where God says, I want to come and I want to rescue my people. It's because when we allow ourselves to be rescued, when we allow ourselves to hear the voice of God, to accept that relationship with the God of the universe, When we have the relationship with him, then he, he begins to work in us, to place his heart in us, so that whatever he calls us to have our heart broken for, just like his heart breaks, then he's going to use us to make a difference in that. God first rescues, rescues us. And he sets us on that path of eternal life with him. So if you're here today and you've not let God rescue you yet, why not? Say it again. Why not? Good job. Hear God's voice. Hear him calling to you today to rescue you, to draw you into relationship with him. God is throwing out a lifeline. God wants to be your hero. The Avengers can't save you. Larry Boy can't save you. It's God. God wants to save us. So let him. If you've never accepted Jesus into your heart, I ask you today to consider to do that. But if you've already been rescued, let's not get complacent in our walk with Christ. Because he designed it so that we can grow throughout the rest of our lives and into eternity. That relationship with Christ will grow. It won't be stagnant. So don't be content with your walk with Jesus right now. Keep it growing. There's so much more that we have in store 
um, that God has for us to, to learn about His love for us. So keep growing. So we have to know God as God knows us. And then let's put that to work in helping others to know Him as well. And when all of those things fit together, that's where our holy discontent is. How is God asking you to use your gifts to make a change in the world, to help Him rescue someone? God's placed a burden on your heart. So let Him use it for His good. I want to uh, kind of sum up what I'm thinking in, in the words to a song, and it's called uh, One Pure and Holy Passion. And the, the words are up on the screen. It says, give me one pure and holy passion. Give me one magnificent obsession. Give me one glorious ambition for my life to know and follow hard after you. We all grow up, and, and especially those that are in, uh, in the college years, you're, you're going to college, you're learning, you're asking God, what am I going to be when I grow up? How am I going to make a difference in the world? Let this be your very first passion, your first question. What am I going to be? I want to be a person who knows and follows hard after Jesus. To grow as his disciple. Because when we grow in God, then he takes it from there. And he will, he will change the world through you. If you let him work in your heart. So as the worship team comes forward and as we close this morning, we want to sing the song, Draw Me Close to You. And may this closing song be your prayer today that God would draw you close to Him. May it be your prayer that you would be rescued from this life, granted eternal life with our Almighty Creator and our Redeemer. And it may, your, may it be your prayer that whoever God chooses to break your heart and spur you to action, you would move. What breaks your heart? Draw close to God. Let Him speak to you. And let Him move through you. Draw me close. Let's sing that.
Father, draw us close. Teach us to walk in your ways. Guide us in your truth. Lord, we ask for your uh, favor, your blessing, your presence to be among us uh, today, he, here and now, and even as we leave this place, that you would grow us in our relationship with you, and that the things that break your heart would somehow, in some way, touch us today, place that discontent in our hearts, knowing that things are not right, and God, help us to be a part of your solution, to bring your love to bring your salvation to this dying world. God, we, uh, we just turn our hearts to you. We turn our focus to you. We ask that you would use us today to bring honor and glory to your name. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.